Hello, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Ayodhi Chimasulugu and I'm a PhD student in Glasgow, Scotland. So in this second video, I'm going to be answering a common question, a question that I had definitely when I was starting or oh, before I started my PhD. So what exactly is a PhD? So you would like to know what exactly a PhD is and what it involves. Continue watching. So yeah, before I get right into it, so I first of all, I want to say that this video is about what a PhD is. So I'm not talking about other kind of doctorates, like professional doctorates, so the FAMD or MD. And I'm not talking about other routes to doctorates, like a professional doctorate, PROFD, or a PhD by publication. So what I'm talking about basically is a PhD, so Doctor of Philosophy. So now. One key thing that is important to know about PhDs is that they vary from country to country. So the way a PhD is structured in the United Kingdom is different from how it's structured in North America or even in Ireland or Australia. The way a PhD is structured in the United Kingdom, in most universities, as far as I know, you don't have to do any coursework. So basically, unlike in undergrad and master's where you have a set timetable and number of modules or units that you have to do in order to earn that degree for a PhD you don't have to do any coursework in the United Kingdom basically what you're required to do is focus on your research from the get-go but when you compare that to somewhere like um, the US for example a lot of the PhDs there as far as I know you have to do a certain amount of coursework and then before you can then go into doing your main research and then even in places like Ireland, they have structured PhDs too that almost follow that kind of route where you have to do coursework and all of that. But the main thing that all of them have in common is that basically you are going to be an independent researcher. So a PhD is training you to be an independent researcher. So it doesn't matter how you get to that point. But by the time you end that Doctor of Philosophy degree, you are an independent researcher, certified independent researcher. So that does not mean that in places like the United Kingdom that don't um, do coursework, you cannot opt to take some certain amount of coursework. So for example, in my own university, you are allowed to, if you want, do a postgraduate certificate in research methods. So what you request is take four modules on the Master of Research program and then you finish up with a postgraduate certificate in research methods. Now that is optional, so you're not required to do it in order to pass a certain stage or reach a certain stage. It's basically optional and it's just an added value to your degree if you want or not. So that's just basically, so PhDs vary from country to country, but the key thing is that when you're done, you're an independent researcher. So, the other point is just like I've already mentioned. So it's quite different from when you're in undergrad or when you're doing your master's and you have all that coursework. But one key thing again about a PhD is that so for an undergrad and master's, or well, especially taught master's, you have a set timetable, you have classes at a certain time, you have exams at a certain time. With a PhD, you don't have that structure basically. So you don't have any timetable, it's very flexible, you work, if you decide that you want to work 9 to 5 every day of the week, or if you want to work on weekends, or if you want to work, start work at 10 or 11, as long as you get your work done and you're eating your milestones, it doesn't matter. So now that's the advantage of it, it's quite flexible, but then that might also be a disadvantage because of its flexibility you have to really have strong skills in time management project management and just basically keeping your eye on the end goal which is the phd so now looking at the structure of a phd so now i'm bringing it down to the structure of my own phd and what i've experienced so far in the uk and this is common to most programs so you're expected to ideally finish your phd within three to four years so the structure the kind of expected structure is that in your first year you're digging deep into the literature you're doing your literature review you're in my university you have to write um, a 6000 word um, document almost like a proposal and then go through an upgrade examination in the ninth to 12th month and then after you pass your upgrade or your confirmation whatever is called in other universities maybe progression report you 
are now classified as a phd candidate so basically when you enroll in your first year yes you, you came to do a phd but they enroll you as an mfu so master philosophy stroke phd student so it's only when you pass your upgrade viva that you make it to the stage of phd candidate in your second year and so in your second year you're expected to do the um so in your first year when you submit the probation report you have written up a proposal a very comprehensive proposal like what you submitted for your application and your methodology and then it's expected by your second year you collect your data and then by your third year you're analyzing and writing up your findings and all of that but yeah that's the structure that is expected but PhDs really have um, different periods and have different journeys and things happen along the way the pandemic can happen and all of that but basically that's just the structure in the uk that's the way it is so between three to four years you're expected to complete your phd sometimes data collection can spill it over from your second year into your third year and sometimes you can do it throughout um, your phd a lot of things overlap the literature review you do it throughout your phd you're constantly getting updated with literature so basically that's just the structure of phd and also and like it in a bio phd so firstly everybody knows you get supervisors so you can have between one to three supervisors and your supervisors basically are guiding you on your journey to becoming an independent researcher and they help you to really reach that stage of independent research and they usually have experience in either the field that you're studying or they have experience with the methodology that you're using but basically they are very key in the journey of your phd and journey to becoming an independent researcher then also during your phd there are many opportunities available to you so for professional development so now you might be doing a phd maybe because you want to become a lecturer or because you really love research and then you want to you're looking at roles outside academia but the kid about a phd is you have a lot of opportunity for professional development you have the opportunity to attend conferences present your work write papers and you have the opportunity to attend different trainings and different seminars so basically it's very important you take advantage of all these opportunities during your phd and then finally one other thing i want to touch on about my phd is so a lot of people um, wonder oh am i a student or my staff so the truth is that a phd student is usually in between almost like in between student and staff so you're enrolled as a student but then you're treated as staff but then you're not getting as well paid as a staff that's if you are funded so what the kid about um the phd is that you're almost treated as a staff so you're basically trained to be a researcher but your research is obviously contributing to the work of the university basically you're producing knowledge that would advance the field that you're studying in so although you're enrolled as a student or you have supervisors you're also more or less treated as staff but they're not obviously giving full staff privileges so i've seen um for example there was this tweet on twitter about somebody expressing their displeasure with being referred to as a student when they're doing their phd i could relate with that because sometimes it feels like oh people don't treat you like somebody who is actually doing like you know proper work people think oh you're still in school what are you still doing in school how is studies and all of that but the truth is that especially for someone like me who has quite some work experience and then has come back to the phd i could understand where the person is coming from trying to say okay i'm not a student should be asking me how is my research going you know how my studies going like, i like it in a bio phd that links to the last point is that it's almost a job i mean it is a job because even though you're not expected to come in at a certain time every day which might vary some PhD students might have that experience maybe actually PhD students that are doing lab based kind of work but although you're not expected to come in and have regular hours and you know all of that it is a job because at the end of the day you're conducting research like I said, you're training to become an independent researcher. Your work is contributing to the body of knowledge. So it is a job and you should treat it like a job. You should treat it like a job. And that's the only way that one would really strive through it. And it's just almost like a mindset shift. So yeah, that's basically, that. those are just some aspects of a PhD and what a PhD is. And of course, I have not covered everything about what a PhD is. And if you have any questions about other areas that i have not touched on you can just let me know in the comments and if you like this video just give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you get notifications when i upload the next video so see you in the next one thank you